Hi everyone, my name's Rich and today I'll be taking you through another glass cast resin tutorial. This time we'll be making this eye-catching neon resin plank table using readily available softwood and our special glass cast 3 surface coating resin which will tint with a neon yellow pigment and then simply pour to give us this stunning glossy finish without the need to flat or polish the surface. In this tutorial, I'll explain what type of wood and other materials you'll need in order to complete the project, and then how to stain and flame treat the planks to create more contrast, set up a baseboard and barriers to contain the resin, calculate how much resin you'll need for the project, tint, measure and mix the glass cast 3, pour the resin in layers to completely encapsulate the planks, finish the edges and finally fit the legs to complete this amazing project. Unlike our river table tutorial, this resin plank table doesn't require anything special in terms of the wood that we're going to use. Instead, we'll rely on some clever preparation of the wood and some really vivid neon pigments for the resin to create the distinctive final appearance of the piece. We're using this basic smooth planed timber, which is very inexpensive and readily available from any DIY store or timber merchants. Other materials and tools that you'll need to complete the project will be the special Glass Cast 3 epoxy coating resin, your choice of neon tinting pigment, a baseboard, timber strips to act as barriers, release tape, tile spacers, abrasive papers, polishing compound, a planer, and your choice of legs for the table. Although not essential, I'll also use some wood stain and a blowtorch on the planks. I managed to buy the wood in a range of widths, so having decided the size of the table, the first thing I've done is to cut them down to different lengths so that I can create a staggered pattern. I'll arrange the planks, making sure there is an 8mm gap between each one. The tile spaces I mentioned earlier will come in handy for this. As well as the gaps, I also want to create some variation in the appearance of the planks themselves, and I can do this by individually lightening and darkening some of the planks, which I'll indicate just using some masking tape. So these are the planks that I've decided I want to make lighter, which I'll do using some of this water-based wood stain that I got from a local DIY store. If you do choose to do something similar, make sure you buy a water-based wood stain. Oil-based stains will leave oil on the surface of the wood, making it difficult for the resin to bond properly. For these darker pieces, I'm going to use a blowtorch to lightly flame treat the surface, and this really helps to bring out the grain. Before you go ahead and have a try on your final pieces of wood, Make sure you practice the technique first on some offcuts. The trick here is to keep the torch moving all the time over the wood, not slowing down or stopping in one area. I've now got the mix of lighter, darker and plain planks that should give me that extra bit of visual interest that I wanted. So from this point, we just need to move on and get the baseboard and barriers set up. It's very important to be accurate when you set up the barriers for the pour. Done correctly, it should leave very little by way of trimming or finishing of the resin once it's cured. As you can see on this sample piece, our finished design calls for a resin border between each plank, but also all around the outside edge of the table, making the planks appear completely encapsulated within the resin. And so it's important that when we set up the barriers, we allow for this resin border. Before we start with the barriers, we need a suitable baseboard. It's essential that the material you use for your baseboard is one that epoxy resin won't stick to. I'm going to use polypropylene sheet, which I'll stick down with double-sided tape. This sheet's totally non-stick, reusable, and gives a more than adequate finish for the underside of the table. Since we'll be using a self-leveling resin, we need to make sure that the baseboard is perfectly flat and level. To prevent the glass cast resin from sticking to the battens, I'll apply this special release tape to the face of the batten that will be in contact with the resin overhanging the edge so that the tape can be used to seal the barrier down to the baseboard. Of course it's important to ensure that there are no gaps in the tape at all, otherwise the resin could either escape or stick to the battens. With the barriers in place, we're now ready to move on to the resin itself. Choosing the correct resin is probably the most important aspect of this entire project. The glass cast range includes the glass cast 50, which is the resin we used for the resin river table tutorial. That resins for very thick, super clear castings. However, for this project, we're going to use the Glass Cast 3, which is a specialist coating resin. Being designed as a coating resin, 
Glasscast 3 has special additives that make it settle and cure with a perfectly flat, glossy finish. However, these additives also affect the clarity slightly, which means that it's not as good for things like river tables where you want a deep, clear casting. But as we're heavily tinting the resin in this project, we can make use of the way that Glasscast 3 cures with an incredibly glossy finish, meaning we won't need to flat or polish the surface of the table once the resin's cured. Working out how much resin you need for a resin plank project like this one can be a little bit complicated because you'll need to allow for the resin underneath, in between and over the top of all of the planks. The Glasscast website can help you to accurately determine exactly how much resin you'll need. However, if you plan to use similar board thickness and spacings to what I've used, then you should allow for about 10 kilograms for every square meter of table. Our table's 1.28 square meters, so I'll need just under 13 kilograms of resin. So three five kilogram packs will be more than enough. To achieve this eye-popping yellow color, I'll be adding this neon yellow glass cast pigment to the resin. Having done some experimentation beforehand, I found that adding 3.5 grams of pigment per kilogram of resin gives me the vivid but still translucent appearance I want, which means I need about 50 grams of pigment, which is two of these 25 mil bottles, to colour all 15 kilograms of the resin. To ensure consistent colour throughout, I'll pigment all of the resin in one go. To encapsulate these planks properly, and to make sure that no air escapes from the wood during the cure, we need to pour the resin in four stages. In stage one, we'll pour the three millimetre base layer and allow it to partially cure. In stage two, we'll pour a thin layer to seal the planks to the base and also to seal all the other faces of the planks to prevent air bubbles coming out of them later on. Tile spacers will precisely position the planks. In stage three, we'll remove the tile spacers and fill all of the gaps between the planks. And finally, in stage four, we'll pour a three millimetre layer to be the top surface of the table. So, this is stage one. This is where we pour the three millimetre base layer. Firstly, we need to work out exactly how much resin we need to do this stage. And the simple calculation is to take the area of the table in square metres and multiply that by three. This table is 0.8 metres by 1.6 metres, which is 1.28 square metres. 1.28 multiplied by 3 is 3.84, so I'll need 3.84 kilograms of resin. Glasscast 3 uses a 2 to 1 mix ratio by weight. This means I'll need 2.56 kilograms of resin and 1.28 kilograms of hardener. Accurately measuring out the resin and hardener is essential because Glasscast 3 uses a by weight mix ratio. This means you'll need to use digital scales to weigh out each part. Try to be as accurate as you can. To avoid the risk of unmixed resin or hardener from the sides or corners of the mixing bucket causing problems, we highly recommend using the double potting method, whereby you mix the resin and hardener in one bucket before transferring to a second clean bucket and mixing again. If you follow this procedure, you should never have a problem. I can now pour this pigmented and mixed resin directly onto the baseboard. Having already calculated the correct amount of resin to achieve the three millimetre thickness, I know that I just need to pour all this resin in one go. Although not essential, here you can see that I'm using a heat gun on a moderate setting to gently warm and disturb the resin. This just helps to expel any trapped air within the resin, although generally Glasscast does a very good job of this itself. I now need to leave this base layer to partially cure to what we call the B stage. That's where it's firm enough to support the weight of the planks without them sinking into it, but it's still got some tackiness that will allow the next layer of resin to bond perfectly to this one. In an ambient temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, this will take around 12 hours, so overnight is ideal. Whatever you do, don't just forget about it though, because the next layer of resin really needs to go down whilst this one's still tacky. This base layer has now cured to the B stage. Because the time taken to reach the B stage is so dependent on lots of different factors, including the temperature and the thickness of the resin, it's very important to test this for yourself with a gloved finger. With the resin at the B stage, it should feel firm but slightly tacky on the surface, and it should be possible to just leave a mark but not dent it, and you won't have any resin on your glove. This is the stage we need to reach between every layer that we're going to pour. The purpose of this second pour is to seat the planks down onto the base layer and also to fully seal the planks to prevent air from escaping from the wood during the later pours. 
The amount of resin needed for this second stage is 1.5 kilograms per square meter. From earlier, we know we have a 1.28 square meter table, so 1.28 times by 1.5 equals 1.92 kilograms. Splitting this amount at the 2 to 1 ratio, this gives us 1.28 kilograms of resin and 0.64 kilograms of hardener. Every time we mix resin for this project, we'll use the same double potting process that I described for the first pour. Start by pouring all of this resin batch straight onto the semi-cured base layer, using a spreader if necessary to even out the resin. Once the resin is spread out, start to gently lower the planks into the resin in their correct positions. When you lower the planks into the resin, start with one side and then gently tilt them. This will help to prevent air pockets from being trapped underneath them. Keep going until all the planks are roughly in position. We now need to seal all the other faces of each plank using some of the surrounding resin. Just use a clean brush to paint the resin over the sides, ends and the top of each plank. Once all the planks are coated, use the tile spacers to set the 8mm gap between them. If you didn't use tile spacers or something similar, then the planks would be likely to float around and move out of position after you left them. For the slightly larger gap around the outside, I've made some simple packers to keep everything in position. With all of the planks now sealed and spaced correctly, we just need to leave this resin again to cure to the B stage. A few hours have now passed, and whilst the resin hasn't yet cured to the B stage, it has occurred to me that it'll be easier to remove the tile spacers now before the resin cures any further. I'll leave this now for a few more hours to reach the B stage. In this third stage, we want to fill the gaps between and around the planks with resin until it's flush with the top surface. The amount of resin you're going to need for this is going to depend on a few factors. The thickness of the planks, the number of gaps you have, and the spacing. So for these planks, I've worked out that I need 2.5 kilograms of resin per square meter. Therefore, 1.28 times by 2.5 is 3.2 kilograms. I then split this into the 2 to 1 ratio to find out how much resin and hardener I need. Because this pour is the deepest, I'm going to lightly use the heat gun again to help remove any air bubbles from the resin at this halfway depth. This just means the bubbles don't have as far to rise out of the resin. I now fill the gaps up to the top. It's quite important with this stage to fill exactly to the tops of the planks, so you might find you're left with a little excess resin or that you need to mix up a little more. A clean brush, painting resin over the tops of the planks, helps to break the surface tension and leave the surface as flat as possible. And I'll use the heat gun for a second time just to help remove any air bubbles trapped deeper down in this thick resin pour. Once again, we just need to leave this resin now to cure to the B stage before we do the final pour. This resin's been left overnight and it's now at the perfect B stage, so we're ready to move on with the final pour, which will form the final top shiny surface to our table. We're going to use the same amount of resin as we did for the base layer, which will give us a 3mm thick top. The resin was mixed in just the same way as for all previous stages. If anything, I took even more time and care to get everything perfectly measured and mixed for this critical final pour. With this critical final pour now safely under cover, we're going to leave it to fully cure, which will take at least 24 hours at normal room temperature. It's actually been a couple of days now since we did the last pour, and so the resin should be really well cured. If you're doing this yourself, it's really important to be patient at this stage, and don't be tempted to demold the table until you know that the resin's fully hardened. You'll know that the resin's fully cured when it's impossible to leave a mark in the surface, no matter how hard you press down with your fingernail. That's where we're at, so we know it's now safe to handle, we can remove the barriers and get on with finishing the table. With the top turned over, it's easy to separate from the baseboard, and you can see that we've got a really good finish on the underside of the table. There are a couple of air bubbles visible where maybe I needed to be a bit more careful to lower the planks into the resin on an angle, but all in all, this looks very smart for the underside of the table. As you can see, it's easy to separate the barriers away from the cured resin, and the release tape that we've used actually leaves a pretty good finish right from the off. The next step is to tidy up the edges. We want to remove this sharp meniscus of resin and leave the edges as flat and smooth as possible. If you don't have an electric planer, then it would be well worth considering one for this project. You'll find that a basic model can be picked up very reasonably. Alternatively, with a little extra time and effort, you can do the same job with a hand plane, or if you have it, 
these edges will cut back really nicely on a table saw. This is the finish straight off the planer and as you can see it's actually pretty good. But to finish it to a full gloss we're going to wet sand it and then finish with a polishing compound. Good technique is called for when flatting and polishing resin like this. You need to work up gradually through increasingly fine grits of paper. I've started with a 240 grit paper, then a 400, an 800 and finally 1200 grit. It's important to use a block behind the paper when you're using the coarser papers to avoid accidentally radiusing the edges. You should only ever move on to the next grit when you've removed all of the scratches from the previous grit and always change the water between grits. To polish the edges, I'm using Pie Crystal's NW1 polishing compound, which is ideal for tough plastics like epoxy. And on a small area, like the edge of this table, the NW1 compound should allow you to achieve a full gloss by hand, or you could use a power polisher to make this quicker. At this point, the tabletop's essentially complete, and now it's just a case of finishing it with the legs of your choice. In the end, we opted for these clean, modern, industrial looking legs, available from the Hairpin Leg Company. You'll find their details in the description below. So here it is, our finished neon resin plank table. For the quality and uniqueness of the end result, it's surprisingly short on labour and complexity, having taken us only a few short hours of hands-on work to bring the table to life. If you're following this project yourself, providing you use the Glass Cast 3 resin, your results should be every bit as good. Although we've made a table, this exact process could be used to make a fantastic looking headboard or shelf or bench or so many other things. And you could completely change the final appearance by changing the colour of the resin or the planks or changing the layout so having bigger gaps or no gaps or changing the angle of the planks. This really is a concept where the possibilities are endless. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. We've taken some inexpensive planks and turned them into an eye-catching table that would be the centrepiece to any designer apartment or a modern office using little more than the Glass Cast 3 resin and some pigment. If that's inspired you to have a go yourself, then order your Glass Cast 3 online today. Glass Cast resin and all ancillaries to complete this project are available to buy right now on the Easy Composites website for shipping to many countries worldwide. Visit easycomposites.co.uk or click the link on screen. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to know about other resin tutorials as we create them, click the subscribe button now. If you'd like even more in-depth information, use the link on screen to download for free the full version of the Neon Plank Table Handbook, or click the link to see another great glass cast resin tutorial.